Today, I spent 100 days in Cobblemon. I want to become the very best and capture some of the strongest Pokemon in the game. But first, I have a couple of challenges that I want to accomplish within the 100 days. I want a full team of level 100s, find the shiny, catch 150 unique Pokemon, catch a legendary Pokemon, evolve 20 Pokemon, and beat one gym leader. Will I be able to do it? Keep watching till the end and thank you Cobbleland for sponsoring the video. On day one, I spawned in and decided to vote for the server six times and I got six vote crate keys. I then had to make the most important decision of my life, which is choosing my starter. Out of all of the starters, I decided to go with Score Bunny. I then used the vote crate keys and got some good stuff and I explored most of the world and then afterwards, I found the Star Ravia, and luckily, I somehow caught it. I then went back to the Pokemon Center and I found a Zigzagoon and I caught that as well. I then traveled through the dangerous lands trying to find new Pokemon and not die to the hostile mobs and I found a Cottony and decided to catch that as well first try. I then beat a Mudbray and gave my score bunny 4 levels and to my surprise I found my favorite Pokemon which is Absol. It was a hard fight but I caught it with my last Pokemon available. On day 2, I looked around spawn for new and cool Pokemon. I managed to catch a Wooloo, but I accidentally killed a Diglett. I managed to catch a Weedle that had enough levels to evolve all the way to a Beedrill, and that helped me on my way to evolve 20 Pokemon. I managed to beat a Chargebug, and Score Bunny had enough levels to evolve into a Reboot. I explored for a cool new Pokemon in the wild, and managed to catch a Caterpie that was high enough level as well to be evolved into a Butterfree. I slaughtered animals and mobs along the way, and decided to go mining because I needed materials for more Pokeballs, and I also was trying to find more apricorns, and luckily, I found a green apricorn tree. Hostile mobs were killing me in the process, and I beat up a Nary for levels, and then I managed to find a tad bulb, caught it first try as well. On day 3, I was trying to beat a Medicham, and it was sweeping my whole team, and decided to catch it instead. I put Medicham on the team with insane moves and realized I need to make a base so I traveled the world for a place to make my home and I managed to find a Golduck and I caught the, the Golduck in 2 tries. I then wanted to trade the Wooloo I got earlier and got a level 1 Timber. I personally don't think that was worth it at all but I caught another Absol and with the 2 Absols I have I can use them for breeding and then afterwards I got an Absol Egg. I then got a berry sweet from the chat, which I don't know what it even does, and I trained the team and explored the place for my base and caught a hoo-hoo that evolved all the way to a Noctowl. I caught Ariados after way too many Pokeballs, then I explored more of the world and got more Apricorns while trying to find a place for my base. On day 4, I was gathering more Apricorns and I was still trying to find a place to build my base. I managed to beat a level 39 Galvantula, I then mined some trees for the base and caught a Shinx and that Shinx was high enough level to evolve to a Luxio. Then I found a Drillbur but I accidentally killed it and I was kind of sad because Drillbur is a pretty good Pokemon. I managed to find a red milk tank but the server crashed and the milk tank was still there once I re-logged but I didn't realize it was already of at low health. I managed to beat it and I was really sad. But I went for a Mareep and got crazy XP and then I found a place to settle down finally for my base. On day 5, I was training my team here and there and I saw a Drillbur but in the back, I saw a Majestic Milotic. I went for it and the battle was a hard one but I managed to get it. I decided to make more Pokeballs and now that I have much more Pokeballs, I can finally focus on catching more Pokemon. But I somehow found a Legendary. Tapu Fini and I was in shock and I thought I couldn't catch this but on my second try I actually got it. I was amazed and happy I then took it out and saw the amazing Tapu Fini and I was in shock. On day 6 I started to catch more Pokemon and I saw a Tangrowth which I couldn't catch because it took a lot of my Pokeballs but I got a Primeape instead. I easily found a rare ditto and managed to get it in a reasonably amount of Pokeballs. Tapu Fini was helping me train the rest of my team into become powerful Pokemon and Reboot had enough levels to evolve into a Cinderace. 
On day 7 through day 9, I was catching more and more Pokemon, but the problem is they weren't that strong. So I decided to train the rest of my team while catching Pokemon at the same time, but I was hoping that maybe in the wild I will find something amazing. But unfortunately, I haven't found anything at the moment, but I'm hoping in the future that I can catch even stronger Pokemon. On day 10, I was starting to run out of Pokeballs, so I looked for more Apricorns and Apricorn Trees, but I realized I can wonder trade after a long time and I got one of my favorite Pokemon which was Zora. I tried to train the Zora, but for some reason wasn't getting any levels. I got was so confused and I didn't know what to do. But I think it might be broken at the moment, so I was kind of sad that I couldn't train it up. On day 11, I decided to vote again for more keys and hopefully for some good rewards. I also claimed my Halloween key. I got more Pokeballs from the Vote Crate, which is decent for now, and the Halloween Crate key contained a Withered Pumpkin, Meganium. I evolved some Pokemon, and I took out the Meganium and saw its model and the amazing texture it had, and I incorporated it into my final team. I then realized I ran out of coal, so I decided to mine, but the mine was super dark, so I decided to cut down trees to make charcoal instead. I made more Pokeballs just in case if I'm trying to catch something very important for my team. I was trying to catch a Patil and Lechonk, and they were harder to catch than I thought, but I caught more Pokemon around spawn to wait out the night. On days 12 to 14, I was actually going into the wild at nighttime and trying to get more Pokemon, and dangerous hostile mobs were surrounding me. I then found a Bagon, and honestly, it might be part of the final team since Salamence is pretty good. I wanted to trade a one-life Pokemon and got a Monferno, but I already had a fire type on my team, so I, it wasn't the best one to trade in the world. My Absol Egg hatched with the Poke Hatch command, and honestly, it was amazing. I was training my Bagon a lot, and eventually, it became a Shellgon. I needed more Pokeballs as fast as possible, but there was no Apricorns around me, and plus, the Apricorns I did plant weren't growing that much at all. And so, I decided to train my Shellgon to become a Salamence as soon as possible so then I can get the amazing Salamence. On days 15 through 16, I had to find more Apricorns as soon as possible. But I was training in the background as well and I distributed the levels with all my Pokemon on my team. I was killing a lot of Stantlers honestly and I'm pretty sure the Stantler population is extinct at this point. And I was also fighting hostile mobs as well. I managed to die to a creeper that snuck up behind me, and the server luckily had keep inventory, and also creepers couldn't blow up the terrain, which I'm very thankful for. And I managed to get my more apricorns last night for Pokeballs, and I finally had a decent amount of Pokeballs to catch new Pokemon, and I caught some Pokemon here and there, but I couldn't find any strong Pokemon, so I decided to RTP more to find something interesting. On day 17, I made more Pokeballs with the Apricorns I managed to collect, and I also made a Diamond Sword since the Stone Swords I'm using just run out way too quickly because of the amount of mobs that are spawning. And I caught more Pokemon since I made more balls, and then Kata evolved and I got a Shedinja in the process, and the Ninjask. I wonder trade a Ninkata I had in the PC, and I got a level 2 Joltik unfortunately. That's just my bad luck honestly, like I don't know why my luck is terrible. I avoided the hostile mobs as well out in the wild to find more Pokemon that I wanted to catch. On days 18 and 19, I caught more Pokemon with the Pokeballs that I have at the moment. I managed to find a really strong Pupitar that was level 52, and it was a Pokemon I wanted, but it took a lot of Pokeballs unfortunately, and I replaced it with Escadrill, and I decided to train the Pupitar up as soon as possible to the Tyranitar, but hostile mobs were not leaving me alone. And then I found an Eevee which is one of my favorite Pokemon. I caught it but it also took a lot of Pokeballs as well. But it was worth it. I was trying to find more Apricorns since Pupitar and Eevee took a lot of my Pokeballs away. And the Pupitar I was trying to train as fast as possible so far. But I managed to find more Apricorns in the night. And I found this huge Executor. But a Creeper sneaked up on me and killed me once again. On day 20, I wanted to train my Paduck to get a strange Pokemon that I had no clue that existed. And I trained my Pupitar to a Tyranitar and went around catching more Pokemon, exploring new biomes for anything that catches my eye. For the whole day, Hostile Mouth kept on attacking me even though it was the afternoon. But I managed to catch some cool Pokemon that didn't take long, but some weren't easily caught unfortunately. 
On day 21, I checked my Pokedex and I got 16% of all the Pokemon in the game. And I got my free Halloween key and I got my Vote Keys again. And I opened the Vote Crates and I got some pretty bad things, honestly. And from the Halloween crate, I got a Piggy Banky, which is kind of just meh. I personally don't like the texture, but maybe other people like it. I then collected more apricorns for more Pokeballs, and I caught new Pokemon along the way for my Pokedex to become completed. And I wonder traded, and I got Dratini, and this Dratini was really good, and this was a hard decision to make, but I sadly had to replace Shellgon, and I need to train Dratini, and I trained him more and caught more Pokemon in the wild so I can catch up to the level of Shellgon. On day 22 to 25, I went on a killing spree of Pokemon and hostile mobs, and I caught some Pokemon from here and there, but I was catching more Pokemon for the Pokedex, and I was training and collecting more Apricorns, and I had my Wonder Trade again, and I got a Rattata. Absolutely fantastic. I managed though to evolve my Dratini into a Dragonair, and the more Apricorns I collected, the more Pokeballs I was getting, but while I was collecting Apricorns, I fell into the same pit twice and died. How embarrassing, honestly. I did a bunch of evolutions and managed to evolve 20 Pokemon, so I finished that challenge for now and hopefully I can finish the other challenges as quick as possible. And I was trying to train my Dragonair into a Dragon as soon as possible so I can get it to be really good and with really good moves at the same time. On day 26, I was training my Pokemon evenly and I found the rare Torchic and got it. Even though I could use a lot of Pokeballs, I think it was worth it in the end. At this point, I was just trying to fill out the Pokedex as much as possible, but I couldn't find new Pokemon at all. But suddenly, at night time, I managed to find more Pokemon to catch that were new. Some took a few tries, but I think it was fine because honestly, the more Pokemon I have, the better it is. And I managed to evolve some more Pokemon for the Pokedex. On day 27, I checked my Pokedex and it was at 29%, which I was happy about because I barely played on the server so far and 29% is pretty decent. And I was currently trying to distribute the time of making Pokeballs, trading, and catching. But I checked out my Ganium again and realized it had a red star next to it. So I was assuming maybe I got a Shiny Meganium. So that challenge is done surprisingly and I didn't even realize it at first. At night, I caught a lot of new Pokemon along the way that I knew that I needed for the Pokedex. On day 28, my Pokemon were leveling really slow since they're a higher level, and I knew getting to level 100 is going to take a long time, and for me to take on the gym leader, I need some level 100s. But there's way too many Pokemon to catch, and some took a lot of my Pokeballs, but I think it was worth it, but like, I wasn't training my Pokemon, which is a big problem. I knew it was very risky trying to catch Pokemon at night with hostile mobs surrounding me, but I somehow managed to find new Pokemon somehow, and I was really happy I did. On day 29 to 30, I was catching more Pokemon to fill out the Pokedex. I thought the Pokedex is like the most important thing, so I continued to catch more Pokemon. I then realized I had another Wonder Trade, and for some reason, I got a Shiny Azelf out of nowhere, and I didn't know someone put a Shiny Azelf into the Wonder Trade. I was speechless. I was really happy that I got it, but if I were to challenge a gym leader, I can only use one legendary Pokemon in my team, which I already have one, so I didn't use the Azelf unfortunately. And while I was catching a Metapod, I got blown up by a Creeper. What an embarrassing moment again for me. On day 31, I wonder traded and I was hoping I would get another good Pokemon, but unfortunately, I got a C Dot. I then later picked up some Apricorns and caught some more Pokemon along the way, and I crafted a decent amount of Pokeballs, and at night time, I was being really risky and might have been my fault. I was trying to catch more Pokemon along the way, but there was quite a bit of hostile mods, but it went well anyways. On days 32 to 35, I was filling out the Pokedex, catching Pokemon, and finally, I got my whole team to become level 50 and above, which is halfway there to level 100, and the world was absolutely huge, and as I was exploring, I made a huge mistake with my team. Dragonair slash Dragonite doesn't learn any good moves while leveling up, and since there's no TMs available in the game yet, I put Shellgon back in the team because I had a better moveset. I was trying to get as many Pokeballs though as soon as possible and I found the Basculin in the water and for some reason this Basculin wouldn't get into any of my Pokeballs but eventually I caught it after so many attempts but after that I was on a catching spree, I was getting more resources and hostile mobs were attacking me and in the distance I saw a Tyranitar 
but it actually wasn't. It was actually called Iron Thorns, and I actually caught it somehow, but unfortunately, I don't think it'll make it into the final team. I was basically making Pokeballs with the amount of apricorn trees in the area, catching and exploring the world, but I needed to train since I know that getting to level 100 can take a long time, so I decided to do that. But there was way too many hostile mobs in the wild, so I tried again later. And after the dangerous night, I can finally train in peace, and I found another Eevee which fell into a big cave, and monsters surrounded me, but I managed to survive, and I caught some more Pokemon, and trained mostly. And spawn is honestly the best place to find high level Pokemon in the area, and there's also some new ones at spawn as well. But if I really wanted to get stronger, I had to go out in the wild and find even higher leveled Pokemon. On day 36, my team was slowly getting stronger and I couldn't wait for my Salamence. Catching and training was hard to distribute on what to do first since training will take longer since I need more and more XP if I wanted to get to level 100. My Shellcon eventually evolved into a Salamence, but I learned that my Salamence can learn the different elemental Fang moves and I wonder if my Dragonair can actually learn the different elemental punches as a Dragonite. So I swapped again and put my Dragonair into my party and got rid of Salamence. I tried finding more Pokemon in the nighttime in the wild, but there was absolutely nothing strong. It was just a bunch of weak Pokemon, so I knew I wouldn't get many XP or many levels at all. On day 37 and 38, I wonder traded again, but I got a really bad Pokemon, Rip. I decided to borrow some hay bales from a village and made a bunch of bread to the point that I can probably end world hunger with the amount of food that I have. I picked more apricorns and surprisingly, I spent half the day collecting apricorns in my area and making pokeballs, but now I don't think I have to worry about pokeballs for a while since I have so many in my inventory at the moment. And I decided to risk getting killed in the wild while training and it was nighttime so there was a bunch of mobs that were surrounding me so I had to be careful here and there to not get blown up by anything or get shot by a skeleton or get hit by a zombie. On day 39 and 40, I wonder traded again and I got a Sharpedo which is pretty good but I don't think it'll be part of the final team unfortunately. I managed to evolve my Dragonair into a Dragonite and looks absolutely amazing and powerful. And it can also learn the elemental punches like I thought. I was trying to catch a Bisharp in the wild, but two creepers blew up besides me and killed me while I was trying to catch the Bisharp. And I was searching for more Pokemon out in the wild, but I had absolutely no luck and only finding duplicates that I already had. And I was exploring more places and hopefully trying to find more Pokemon for the decks. And I was training against high level Pokemon and I basically trained through the whole night and I was getting some more levels for my Pokemon for a full level 100 team. On day 41, I voted for the server again and I was hoping for some good rewards. I got more Pokeballs and overall I got some really nice rewards for today. I got a Wulu from Wonder Trade, which isn't good at all, like I didn't want that. I then used the shop to sell things for more money since I was poor and I needed the money for other things later in the future. I was catching tough Pokemon and I realized I have 44% of the Pokedex filled. I focused on training though since I think I'm good with the Pokedex for now and training takes longer the more levels you get. On day 42, I was still training but there was a new Pokemon that I saw in the distance and it was a Rhyperior. I somehow luckily got it and then I trained and catch more of my Pokemon and one of my goals is to complete 50% of the Pokedex and so far I'm at 45%. I'm absolutely killing everything at this point because I need level 100s fast and I found new Pokemon in the wild surprisingly even though I have the majority of the Pokemon out in the wild and there were some rare Pokemon out there as well. On days 44 to 46, I was training and catching Pokemon and personally, catching Pokemon was taking most of the time and I think that the Snowy Plains biome is the best place to train since there are a lot of Pokemon there that are high leveled. I was training in the Snowy Plains biome and there was some really good Pokemon there that I was training against and I was slowly making it to level 100 for my whole team but I realized I might need more Pokeballs so I collected Apricorns and made more Pokeballs and spent over half of the day collecting and making Pokeballs and catching things and then I went to spawn trying to find new Pokemon but I had no luck. But I won to trade again and I got another Dratini and had really good IVs and that made me wonder like maybe this is from the same person. I don't know but I'll take it. 
I was still in the snowy plains biome, leveling slowly, but there was no new Pokemon, but my dex was at 50% completion, and I saw people getting stuff from the nether, so I tried finding a nether portal. On day 47, I was trying to stop training, or at least keep training at a minimum, so I can at least finish my goal of getting 50% of the Pokedex filled, and maybe find a nether portal as well, and I found some new Pokemon, but it was dangerous because the hostile mods unfortunately were surrounding me. I wonder traded and got an okay Pokemon, and decided to find more Pokemon in the overworld instead. On day 48, I needed to quickly finish 50% of the Pokedex, so I went to the Pokemon Center to find any Pokemon that can evolve that I don't have yet. I managed to evolve more Pokemon and got 50% of the Pokedex, and honestly that was amazing. Now I just need to focus on training more because I need to take on a gym leader at the end of the 100 days. I was contemplating about buying a lucky egg, but I decided not to. Unless I don't have level 100s by the time I had to face the gym leader, then I'll buy it beforehand so I can get more XP. On day 49, someone bought something from the store and the whole server got an ultimate key. I was excited to open and see what I can get. I saw the items in the crate and a lot of them were really good. I decided to open the crate and I got 20 beast balls, which is honestly the worst thing I think I could have gotten because I'm not looking for ultra beasts at all and these pokeballs are kind of useless in my personal opinion. Then I went to train and also catch more Pokemon here and there and to see how much of the Pokedex I can fill up and I was using RTP all over the place and there was no good Pokemon that were strong enough to train against. On day 50, I had no luck with training for some of my Pokemon because the high level Pokemon weren't spawning for some reason. I might not be in a biome that I had strong Pokemon to spawn in, but I wasn't going to give up yet. I RTP'd to a Savannah Plateau and found some strong Pokemon, but then another dry patch happened and I just couldn't find anything else. I thought I was near a shiny, but I couldn't find it, and the shiny was a Capsid Kid, and I found the Snowy Plains biomes again, and that means I can train even more. On day 51, I voted for the server again and I got more good rewards, and a person named Gurhan gave me more things. Unfortunately, I forgot to go back to the Snowy Plains teleportation and I lost the Snowy Plains and I can't go back there anymore. I didn't realize I had more kits to claim and got some good stuff and decided to make diamond armor for the hostile mobs in the wild since I had a lot of diamonds already and honestly, Gurhan was giving me a lot of good stuff. Shout out to them. I tried training at night and in my mind, I was deciding to use rare candies or not, but I'm going to use my rare candies when they are close to level 100. On day 52, I found better Pokemon to train against during the day compared to night. I then wonder traded one of my Pokemon again and got another Eevee. And honestly, they must be quite common since a lot of people have Eevee on the server and there's also a bunch of them in the wonder trade pool. I managed to find a Gabite and caught it and I was thinking to myself, maybe I should replace Dragonite for Garchomp since Garchomp is a pretty good Dragon type, but I decided to stick with Dragonite. There was very few Pokemon I have to collect in the wild that aren't rare, so I decided to train at night and then I checked chat about Dino and some sus stuff was happening there with the admin. On day 53, I looked at the server's Poke Builder, and honestly, there's a lot of things you can do to customize your Pokemon. Unfortunately, I'm broke and I don't have many Poke Builder tokens. I kept RTPing and trying to find a Snowy Plains biome, but instead, I found an Ice Spikes biome, which contained a lot of Stantlers. And in the chat, I saw a shiny Geodude spawned in the biome I was in. At first, I thought it despawned, but somehow, I managed to find it, and I caught it successfully. And Guron had some Pokemon here, and they were absolutely insane, and I was impressed. And honestly, I decided to train more and more all night. On days 54 to 56, I was trying to train my Pokemon because I thought they were weak at this stage of the game. So I went out into the wild, and then I realized that my whole team was level 65 and above, and I decided to train for a long time. I needed to get the level 100 Pokemon ASAP for the gym leader since I heard that they are hard to beat. So I was training a lot more because I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough time to get every single Pokemon on my team to level 100 and I caught some new Pokemon here and there. I was trying to catch a very tough Comfy and just wouldn't get into the ball but I decided to keep training and I decided to buy a lucky egg from the shop and honestly that was the best purchase of my life. And I found a rare chest bin and surprisingly, the lucky egg was giving a lot of XP, and I should have bought it earlier, but now I'm focusing on training one at a time my Pokemon to level 100. No, it's not. 
On day 57 of 58, my Cinderace was getting more and more powerful easily and was slowly becoming my best Pokemon. The Lucky Egg was so helpful. Stantlers and Weirdeer stood no chance and gave me so much XP. I wish I bought the Lucky Egg earlier since I could have gotten more XP in the early game, but now that I have it, I feel unstoppable. I then Wonder traded another Pokemon, but unfortunately, I already got this Pokemon, so it was kind of a waste. Training has been very easy to do with the Lucky Eggs, and mobs were surrounding me and was trying to prevent me from training any further, so I took a break and went to spawn to see if there's maybe any new Pokemon around the area, and I checked my Pokedex and it was at 54%, and honestly, I was surprised. I thought I didn't catch enough new Pokemon for it to get to 54%, but hey, I'll take it. On day 59, someone bought the Elite rank, so everyone in the server got an Elite key, and I was hoping that I could get something good from the Elite crate. And once I went to the crates area, people were raining us down with free Pokeballs, so I was like, hey, why not take them? At the crates, I got a medium EXP candy, and I got four of them. But I messed up because I didn't teleport to the snowy plains, so I lost my place there. So I had to find another one, unfortunately. But then someone bought the Mystic rank, and I didn't realize I had a Mystic key in my inventory, so I went back to the crates again, and there was this huge shiny guzzler blocking all the crates, and geez, this thing was massive. In the crate, I got two netherite ingots, which isn't bad, but I think being in diamond armor for now is good. And then I started RTPing more, and I found another ice spikes biome. Again, finally slaughtering more Stantlers, someone also bought a master rank, and then I got a master key. On day 60, a lot of Stantlers were spawning, which was good, but I decided to go back to the crates and see what I can get from the Master Crate. Unfortunately, I only got 2,000 claim blocks, which I don't need. I wish I got a better reward, honestly. I then won to trade it again and I got a bad Pokemon, and I was thinking to myself, maybe my luck is running out because I kind of used it all in the beginning of the game. I almost got blown up by a creeper again, and at the end of this day, my Cinderace was at level 85, and I was amazed. On day 61 and 62, I was killing a bunch of Stantlers and Weirdeers, as well taking small breaks here and there, and I wonder traded, and somehow I got a level 1 Ampharos, but I went back to training again, but the hostile mobs around the area were super annoying, but I managed to train all night. But I need to finish leveling my Pokemon because if I want to take on a gym leader, I need a full team of level 100s. So I bought an EXP share from the store and get it to Tapu Fini and hopefully I was going to get more levels soon. But I think the EXP share was broken because Tapu Fini was the only Pokemon getting EXP and my Cinderace wasn't getting anything. Well that was 2k wasted, rip. I managed to find a shiny swine up and I thought it was going to be gone but it was spawned next to me and I managed to catch it and I decided to train afterwards. On day 63 to 66, I was still on that grind, training my Cinderace to level 100. I took a small break to wonder trade my Grimer for a Mime Junior, which I didn't have in the Pokedex yet, and I kept on training and a creeper blew up next to me and I got scared, because I didn't realize a creeper was that close to me. Cinderace was slowly approaching level 100 by training, but I found a wild Glaceon which I think is really rare in the wild, and at first I didn't think that Eeveelution spawned in the wild, so this is a pretty good find. I wonder traded and I got a random level 1 Charmander which isn't bad because stars are really hard to find in Cobblemon for some reason, and I kept on training. I was getting worried my team won't be level 100 at the end of the 100 days because only my Cinderace is close to 100 while the rest of my Pokemon aren't even that close and the more and more levels they get, the harder it is for them to level up. On day 67, I was training some more on my Cinderace and I found new Pokemon along the way but they're really uncommon since I caught most of the Pokemon in the area so I didn't expect anything to actually pop up and be new and after many days and hours, Cinderace is finally level 100 and Cinderace can learn a lot of new moves which I didn't know it could learn. I decided to train my Dragonite now and I wonder traded it again and got a Bulbasaur which I think it was someone's starter since it was level 10 and I think they accidentally might have gotten rid of their Bulbasaur but hey, I'll take it and I continued to train afterwards. On days 68 to 70, I trained as much as I can with my Dragonite and the rest of my Pokemon. I really need to get this level 100 team as fast as possible because the gym leaders require level 100 Pokemon and so far I only have one at the moment which is my Cinderace and also I need these Pokemon to be level 100 so I can learn all the best moves I can so I can actually defeat and complete this 100 day challenge 
from the gym leader. On day 71, I decided to vote again for more rewards and honestly what I got from the crate was kinda just meh. And I also had my Halloween kit available, so I opened the Halloween crate and I got a Bulbasaur Venusaur costume and it was level 100. And apparently I asked the chat if they can actually evolve into a Venusaur and keep the costume, but it doesn't. But I wonder traded again and got a Rookie D, which is something I definitely do not want at the moment because my Pokemon are pretty high level and I have no time to train this Rookie D. On day 72 to 73, for some reason, the Stantlers and Weirders weren't spawning that much compared to the other days, but I found some here and there, and in the day there was actually some more, and honestly when it was nighttime, I wasn't caring about the hostile mobs. And while I was going back to the Pokemon Center, I asked the server or anyone in the server if it was a good place to train Pokemon, and apparently someone had a full Blissey team which gave me insane EXP, and I realized I wasted so much time on just Stantlers and Weird Deers, and I feel like a complete idiot for not asking the server since the community is really positive. On day 74, I Blissey trained the whole day and night basically. Afterwards, I used my rare candies to get the last of my Pokemon to level 100, and honestly, this is amazing. I honestly thought I wouldn't accomplish the goal of getting level 100s before facing the gym leader, but I'm so glad that Retro had a Blissey team, and honestly, that saves so much time right now. And I decided to look at my Pokemon and see what moves I can change. I changed some of the movesets here and there, because I think they fit better for the final team, but we'll see once we actually go against the gym leader. On day 75, since I had level 100 Pokemon, I wanted to try and catch more Pokemon out in the wild, especially the rare ones, and I surprisingly found more new Pokemon that didn't spawn in these biomes before, and I was like, huh, this is actually interesting. So I continued going and going, and I was just trying to fill out the Pokedex here and there. On day 76 to 80, I was just trying to catch as many Pokemon and RTPing around the world and seeing if I can find them. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any new Pokemon for some reason, but I did find an Eevee, which yeah, I know Eevee's one of my favorites, but I had to catch it honestly. And hoping I can get more of the Pokedex completed because I really want to push my limits on how much I can get in the Pokedex so then I can see how many Pokemon in total I caught in the 100 days. On day 81, I voted for the server for more keys, and I also got my Halloween key, and I got okay rewards from the vote crate, nothing too good if I'm gonna say so myself, and I got a classy Arbok from the Halloween crate key, which I don't know if it's good or not, but hey, it's a free Pokemon basically, and I claimed my Pokedex rewards, and I got a, a lot of really good stuff from it, and went back to the crates to open the crates again, because I got around 12 new keys, and I got some really good stuff from the keys from the Pokedex reward. On day 82, someone named Bear teleported to me and was giving me free stuff and also showing off their Pokemon because this person was actually a gym leader which I might go against on day 100 but he had all these cool Pokemon that he was showing off and I was really jealous honestly because some of the things he had were really cool and I wish I had them but if I play more on the server I'm sure I'm gonna get more of those Pokemon and stuff that he had all these textures all these different styles of new Pokemon like he is very lucky to have them in my personal opinion and I wish I had the same luck as him. On days 83 to 85, I was exploring the world and I checked the GTS for anything that seemed to be a good deal, but unfortunately, I found nothing. And even if I can afford some things here and there, it's probably bad items and Pokemon that I don't need or they're really common to find, so I just kind of ignored the GTS for now. I then wonder traded one of my Pokemon and got a Ponyard, which I don't need at all because I already had one from before. And this one's level 1, so I might just wonder trade it again once my wonder trade is back up again. And while I was exploring the world, I saw an incredible looking base, which I had to see for myself. They had a tall Mimikyu statue, they had a nice house with everything in it, and they had the Shuriken farm. They had so many things that I can highlight, but those were some of the few things that I saw, and I honestly was impressed, and I wish I could build like them, because that would make my base look even better than before. On days 86 to 88, I didn't realize the person with the amazing base had a nether portal at first, so I went into the nether to try and find new Pokemon, but I didn't have any luck finding one from the nether portal I was at, because the place was all cramped and everything, and there was barely any room for Pokemon to spawn. 
but I didn't realize at first, but I can actually RTP in the nether, so I decided to do that, and maybe I can find new Pokemon here and there, and, and to my surprise, I actually did find some new Pokemon, but I was also careful wandering in the nether, because there's gas, piglins, and all those hostile mobs I do not want to go against. I then teleported out of the nether, since I didn't think there's any more new Pokemon in there, but I might be wrong, I might visit it again, but for now, I think I just want to stay in the overworld. <laughs> On days 89 and 90, I kept on RTPing in the overworld, exploring the lands and seeing if I can find any new biomes or Pokemon along the way, but unfortunately, there wasn't anything interesting. I think it's because I kind of caught all the common Pokemon in the beginning of these 100 days and stuff, so then that's why there's not any new Pokemon, but I kept hope that maybe a really rare Pokemon might spawn, and I was thinking to myself, how am I going to beat the gym leader on day 100? Because I've heard they're really strong, but I had to believe in myself and my team if I want to take on the gym leader and beat them. On day 91, I voted for the server again and I got not bad rewards, but we're kind of at the end of the 100 days, so I don't think these rewards really matter too much. And when I read the gym rules, I thought I messed up with my team, but then I actually asked some of the people on the server and I got my answer, so I didn't need to change anything, which I'm very, very lucky because the team I have so far is absolutely amazing. Like all these Pokemon took so long to train and they have all unique movesets and everything like support, damage and all of that. And I'm hoping with this team, I'll be able to beat the gym leader. On day 92, I was preparing for the gym leader and I spent the whole entire day just trying to figure out what moves my Pokemon need and what held items I need to put on them because these gym leaders are no joke and my Pokemon need like a variety of types in their moveset because if I want to go against like really hard Pokemon from the gym leader, I need to have a variety of moves that can easily counteract them. On days 93 and 94, I found a Volcanion, and at first I thought it didn't spawn near me, but I checked the biome I was in, and I was in the right biome, and I just looked around for a bit, and I managed to find a Volcanion, and honestly, I caught it with very little Pokeballs, which I'm very grateful for. And for some reason, I was trying to teach Volcano some new moves from the TM store, but I couldn't figure out why it couldn't learn any of the TMs and why the TMs weren't showing up. But the fix was that I had to get Volcano to level 100, so I changed my Tabu Finny, which I know has been a very, very good Pokemon for me, for Volcano, because I really need that really good attacker and like a variety of moves for the gym as well. On days 95 and 96, I realized that I had some of my kits that were off cooldown, so I claimed them and I got more keys to open in the crate store, and I explored more of the world. I then wanted to trade one of my Pokemon and got a Zangus, which really doesn't really matter at this point because literally the 100 days are almost over, and I was preparing for the final fight after that. On days 97 to 99, I was preparing as much as I can before I take on my gym leader because I know that these people are really hard to go against, so I need a variety of moves to hopefully counteract against a really strong Pokemon. And also, the gym leaders can have a couple of mystical Pokemon as well, and I believe a legendary, so that's going to be a bit scary and hard to beat unless I actually know how to counter against them. And I'm hoping the team I have at the moment will actually bring me to victory when I beat the gym leader. On day 100, before I took on the gym leader, I opened my last Halloween crate and I got a Snorlax, but it doesn't really matter at this point because now I have to beat the gym leader. And the gym leader I'm going to go against is named Bear, which specializes in psychic type Pokemon. So we battled in the first battle and I was actually getting my butt whooped at this point because I was not prepared for all these Pokemon that this gym leader had and I kind of used the wrong Pokemon to start off with. But I managed to at least beat some of their Pokemon, but I wasn't doing that well, and unfortunately, I lost. But then we went into round 2, and I was actually doing a lot better this time, because I actually changed my starting Pokemon to actually counteract some of their Pokemon, and we were exchanging blows after blows, and this was a very close fight, but in the end, I managed to be victorious. Then, we went to round 3, which is the last round, and if I beat them this time, I will get the gym badge, and I will be declared the winner against this gym leader. Round 3 was very tough. At first, I thought I was pretty good at the moment, but later on, as the fight continued, I actually lost my Dragonite, which helped me in round 2, which I was thinking to myself, okay, there's no way I'm going to be winning this without my Dragonite, because my Dragonite is one of the stronger Pokemon on my team. 
But I kept on trying and trying and didn't give up and with enough determination I was beating the Pokemon easily with the rest of my team and they were also beating my Pokemon easily as well and it came down to my last Pokemon and they had two more and somehow I didn't even know that my Cinder Ace did so much damage with U-Turn but after I used some U-Turns on their Pokemon I actually beat them in the last round. I was in shock when I beat them and they congratulated me and I said GG to them and I got my gym badge. So that means I completed all the goals slash challenges for this 100 days. Honestly, this server was an absolute blast to be on. You should definitely check it out in the description. I might do a 200 day challenge on here continuing from where I was in the beginning of the 100 days because I want to beat most of the gym leaders on the server and I know I need better Pokemon because I got really lucky honestly and I feel like there's going to be even harder gym leaders on the server but it's all up to you I might do it in the future but honestly I want to thank you Coppoland for giving me this opportunity to be on your server and have an absolutely wonderful time with an amazing community and honestly, I can't wait for more adventures on the server, but that should be it, and I'll see you all next time.